be here today with our dear brother in Christ, John Grant. And um, today the Lord had this beautiful surprise for each one of us. And we're here today because we want to listen to your story. We want to listen to the beautiful things the Lord and the Holy Spirit has done in your life. And before we proceed, I'd like to invite my brothers and sisters to just introduce themselves. Because today is a very beautiful moment, and I'm not here by myself. We have Sister Minda and Brother Tony that we thank very much. And please, if we start with Lino. Uh, my name is uh, Lino Rodriguez from the Brampton area. Uh, Susanna Rodriguez from the Brampton area as well. And Lily I'm Wetz. And I'm John Grant from from uh, from Cape Breton Island <laughs> you know? in Nova Scotia. Yes. Hilda Martin from Guyana, South America. If that's what you go where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> well, your zone that you care for. Oh, Toronto Central Zone. That's yeah. right. Praise <laughs> God. I'm Al Jacob, and I am a counselor with the Toronto Eastern Zone. And we have Sister Minda and Brother Tony behind scenes, and they are from the Filipino community. And my name is Mary Cruz. So today we have a beautiful guest, and it's John Grant. But before, I just want to share a reading that the Lord gave me as we were preparing. And um, basically, the Word of God is what sustains us, and I'm very sure is one of the pillars that you have been sustained by. So the Lord is telling us today in Jeremiah, call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you wonderful and marvelous things that you know nothing about. We thank you Lord for your word. And this meeting here is actually something that we did not know about, but it was in God's books. So please, Tell us your story. Tell us how you fell in love with Jesus, what you encountered the first time when you came to this beautiful current of grace. So over to you. Uh, I really don't know where to start in the sense that, that, uh, uh, that I, uh, I'm the eldest of uh, six children. And I have a twin. I've been through uh, most of my life with a twin brother. We were identical. We looked like each other uh, in great ways, and uh, we were such friends and, and uh, so forth. I, I did join the the uh, the uh, navy, and in in St. John, eventually I got. 90 days of training in at King's College in Halifax, and then I was shipped off to to St. John's, Newfoundland, to join my first first uh, escort vessel, who escorted these merchant ships across across the Atlantic to and 10,000 ton vessels, you know, all loaded with what was needed to keep England alive. Anyway, all that said, and we got the war over with, and and uh, and but but throughout uh, throughout my life, when since I was young, I was attracted to the church, you know, and I guess I've been a a daily communicant for I mean, since I was a child, sort of mm -hmm. sort of thing. Uh, and since then, I have, I buy the books or I try to keep up with the church to know it and to help it and to be there and, 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 uh, and so forth. Uh, uh, I've had all kinds of, of uh, interactions with, with the Lord and, and uh, one of them, for example, uh, goes like this. I woke up one morning with a with a uh, just a just a little new pain in my groin, and the next morning I woke up again and it was there and so forth and and, uh, and 
and then I moved to the cottage, uh, now in Barrie, and I have this little pain with me and so forth. And, and one day, it wasn't a little pain any longer, I had a hard, sharp, angry pain in my groin that demanded action, you know. This was really, really, uh, uh, so I'm, as I say, I'm at the cottage, uh, uh, it, it, it was a Sunday, by the way, when this happened, and and and, up, and the Barry Hospital is off in this direction, but the church that I was going to is halfway between the cottage. Mm -hmm. I have to pass, you know, on the way to the hospital. So, so I drive. Uh, I. I Start for the hospital, but on the way, I decided I'd go to Mass. I, I would just go to Mass on the way to the hospital. And uh, I remember being finally in the communion line, you know. I'm shuffling up toward the, the, uh, the yeah. post at the beginning, you know. Uh, with an extreme pain. With, with this extreme pain. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, uh, I take the hose, they're, they're, they're uh, offering wine, so I have a sip of the wine. And as I gave back the chalice and turned away, I realized that the pain wasn't there. Amen. Praise, Amen. The Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. And How old were you around that time? Uh, well, you missed a lot of parts. Uh, I'd have to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> because we just, we just want to let everybody who is watching that you are a hundred years old yes. at the moment. Oh, oh yeah. And we are of very course. blessed and, to and, have and, you and with us. Uh, we're celebrating We're hundred, celebrating a hundred uh, years of remembrance. Uh, I must be 60. Remember the, your children's age and then you'll be able to tell. Yeah, well, well my children are are easily 65 years of age. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, no, no, the one uh, at the time, yeah, yeah. at the time of your pain. So, so, uh, but, but I could, you know, God has healed me so many times, and mm -hmm. I was in my hands, for example, uh, with the arthritis mm -hmm. is there, and, and, uh, oh. and that sort of thing, you can see that my crooked finger, and it used to be that, that, I, I, I just was, was frantic with this mm -hmm. pain in your knuckles. And so every time you move your hands, it, it, mm -hmm. and uh, so and so, uh, the, the prayer meeting one evening uh, it was that we move into groups of threes and and two pray for the needs of the third. And I'm with Judas, uh, this lady who you remember. And there's a sister, Rita Dietrich, a nun on the other side. So I day. say to uh, Judas, uh, what would you like the Lord to do for you? And she said, uh, you know, she had all these problems and we prayed for mm -hmm. Judas. And then Sister Rita, she said, well, uh, you know, uh, uh, John, she said, I live in a, in a house with four other nuns and our relationships just aren't really as good as they should be. <laughs> we, we could pray that we can do better, you know, in our house, so we pray for that. And then, John, what would you like the Lord to do for you, Sister says, so I said, I'll have these hands. So one took one, and the other took the other, and they prayed for maybe two, three minutes, maybe a minute and a half. John is here, he's in trouble with his hands, and, and so on. And so, I guess I drove everybody, uh, and the meeting closed. I drove people home, but when I woke up the next morning, I realized that my hands were normal. Mm -hmm. All the arthritis pain was gone. Mm -hmm. It's it's still there. But, and by the way, I re recently went to my doctor and said, what, I've got these two things here. What does that mean? He said, well, that's arthritis. <laughs> so <laughs> no pain. so uh, that was new. But, so I have new arthritis. New arthritis but, at 100. <laughs> yeah, but, but, 
There's no pain with it. No pain. Oh, oh, God, bless the Lord. Thank Thank you. You. God fell. Uh, he's still working and yeah. he's still performing yeah. miracles. Yeah. Yeah. Part of your testimony here says that you joined um, Holy Rosary Prayer Group in 1971. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that was the first time when you encountered the Lord? Yeah. Uh, oh, no. Uh, I, I, was, uh, I was going to uh, Mass every day since, since I can remember. But this was your first charismatic prayer group? Yes. 1971? Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Uh, uh, there was a man called Hanrahan. Oh. Uh, no, no. It, uh, but I'm close. So anyway, Orville Mooney of the Holy Rosary Parish was a deacon there, and uh, and he had a chance that he grabbed this 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 man and had him speak to his pastor, who agreed to to begin a, a Holy Rosary prayer group at Holy Rosary Church. I remember that part. Of it. In those days, if I may interject, that those are the days when they had breakfast. Mm -hmm. And all the yes, and yeah. so you go to these various breakfasts. There is where Orville met this Pentecostal that, that's person. That's right. right. Yeah, yeah. And where did you meet there? Myself and and, and John. John. We met at the prayer group. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, uh, as where I say, I I was close to the Holy Rosary Church because, and I was aware of this, uh, and and uh, so I got started at the at the renewal. There. Right. Um, Orville started the prayer group. He was a deacon, and um, and the, the Brazilian priests were very supportive, supportive yeah. of our, our this prayer, this prayer group after Orville introduced this Pentecostal person that is so much different to the Brazilians. So they says, "Yes, let's have a prayer group," and. Um, I started there in 1970, mm -hmm. and um, John and I met from that, from the inception, and um, so we stayed there, and we have been, we are still there. Praise God. What about, uh, Sister, uh, what about the leaders' meeting that John went to? Was it thing? It oh. Oh, oh, yes, we were having an early, it is the comic Oh, right? he's going back years after <laughs> <laughs> in my kitchen. We were right having a, a, a leader's meeting uh, on a Saturday morning. Okay, let's go with Sister Catherine Ollinger. Sister Catherine Ollinger with Father Bill. Father Bill brought Sister Catherine Ollinger to do this program. And that is how CCRC have these counselors and a variety okay. of things, as we had started from. So Sister Catherine Ollinger, she would drive from the States and come to Toronto with Father Bill, and um, they planned this program. She stayed at my house. She would come and stay for two weeks and another two weeks, and, of concert, and it all built up. And so after Sister Catherine started this program, and she write all these rules and regulations, how a prayer group should t run according to what the Spirit of God was telling her. This, this is a nun and she's been a principal and full of the Lord with Father Bill. And um, so she, we start, they started this program. And so after she, they, she, it was introduced, this program was introduced, and Sister Catherine thinks that we should, the, the prayer groups should have three persons, three leaders. She said, and if so if it's either three or two, right, John? Yes. And, two. Yeah, and so we started this program, and she says, East, West, North, South. And she had these very bright market, Muchimo and all the others. A group of people went East, West, North, South, and to all the various prayer groups to lead, uh, to uh, introduce this program. We still have, we should have it in the CCRC office, introduce this program telling us what we should do, when we should do, and et cetera, et cetera. But, but spontaneity, spontaneity should be involved. And so that's how they we know really, because prior to that, it was Father Bob McDougall, yeah. who has been a priest, a priest and was a gunnery or 
No, he flew the planes. He was a pilot. Yeah. And he was on Huntley Street. So for the Bar of McDougall, after being on Huntley Street, and you did come to, has been, did come to our prayer group to minister to us after Irvin was there and Sister Catherine Orlinger with his teaching and, and take Robert over. Peter and, yeah, yeah, but you take over now. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to tell us about your uh, breakfast, on, your breakfast on a Saturday morning. And I'm uh, and I agreed to bring the breakfast, so <laughs> I arrived. At, uh, I arrived at Hilda's house, and uh, and uh, and the door is unlocked. So, so uh, and I'm familiar and so forth. So, so without thinking, I marched right in and uh, and uh, to the kitchen. But as I crossed the floor, I a, a cup of coffee fell on the floor. And the coffee spilled on the floor. <laughs> so, so I wanted to clean that up right away. So, uh, uh, so I opened the doors under the sink, and there's rags. Everybody has rags there. So, so, and, and I'm on my knees on the kitchen floor, uh, uh, cleaning uh, up, tidying up this coffee. And suddenly, there's a voice. I hear a voice saying. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I look up, it's not Hilda at all, it's another person. And I was in the bedroom, I went and leave the door and locked for him to come I in. I went in next door. <laughs> I went in next door. I went in next door. <laughs> and, and, then, and, and then she said, Are you a preacher? She saw my Bible speak. on her kitchen table. Yeah. So, so anyway, I apologized and <laughs> eventually got into the right house. <laughs> okay, so the, why John was at the thing myself, that we were the first team after Sister Catherine launched her program. We were the first team for Holy Rose with myself, Connie, and John. First leaders on the, this ministry, that's it. Not to say the prayer group has been going on prior to that, but after this program, that's how we have to meet. And John was, is, has been involved in his business. So we had to, and he has his work, and with Daphne and everybody, yeah. he had to plan his work accordingly, and we had agreed, regardless what it is, because we have to work with John. Mm -hmm. He's a leader, so. So Holy meeting. Rosary is the oldest prayer for me. Right. Right. The first one? Yes. And no, no, it was St. Basil's. St. Basil's St. was Basil's. the first one. And it started at Vince Conditious House. And then the second one is Holy Rosary. Right. And the and third one is uh, Pascal Bacon. Yeah. Right. Because we were there yesterday yes. celebrating the 45th yes. anniversary. So yeah. look at that. Yeah. We have two great pillars, three, because rather all two, and here are the, the young people. That okay. we, I think we can commit to follow uh, what the Lord has started with you all. Yeah. I think the path is set, and we just have to really follow the, 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 um, the lead of the Holy Spirit. Because yeah. mm -hmm. we can see God in you. Mm -hmm. We can see the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. in you. A hundred years of experience, 25 years, <laughs> I'm gonna say your age. <laughs> 25 years, 25, the, the Holy Spirit, Keeps us young. No, 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 yeah. So, yeah, so Susie was a baby remember, back in the day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but we have, yeah, she, we have, she, that point, we she have thought, learned. She was a thought in her father's mind. Yeah. Yeah. We <laughs> have learned a lot through perseverance and reading, yes. at least reading the Bible. Yes. We had our program, but we, we know um, spontaneity is, is imperative. Mm -hmm. So we had to fast and pray a lot. Yes. I think back in the day, I don't know if anybody else would like to um, also um, join us, but um, I remember when I met Sister Hilda, I was 17 mm -hmm. in, the, Thomas Aquinas. in the Spanish community. Mm -hmm. And uh, back in the day, we were used to carrying our Bible 
uh, being open to the yes. of the Holy yes, Spirit. Bob to, and, and they would tell us, I remember, we would sit at the prayer group, so we would go to the healing masses, and they would let us know, um, you need to pray, you need to love the Word, mm -hmm. you need to um, love, you know, just to have prayer time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So tell us, tell us more of, for instance, now, 2018. You started in 1970. Yeah. We're 2018 now. Um, what have you seen in the renewal, the, the good, the bad, uh, but what can you tell us in, in a nutshell kind of thing? You know, how we started and where you are at now. I believe the saddest thing about our situation mm -hmm. is that we don't teach on the charismatic gifts. Mm -hmm. Very, very sad. Okay. Because think of all, think of all the the good work that the, the, the miracles and, the, and the, that sort of thing that, that are not encouraged. I mean, we aren't, we aren't alive like we should be mm -hmm. in life. And now, now we have good prayer meetings, mm -hmm. you know, and there's lots of inventiveness and there's lots of power and, there's, and there's God is there. He's not, he's not holding us back. But I believe the tragedy of our situation is that we don't teach on the charismatic gifts. I think that word tragedy yeah. just, just mm -hmm. hit my heart. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. um, we, were, we were talking with Susie and Lino earlier, and we were saying that um, this generation, we are feeling that the Lord is telling us to go back to the basics. Go back to the source. Mm -hmm. Go back to the first love. And I really feel an urgency, and I don't know if you can relate to that, to go back to loving the Word. Because the gifts come from loving the oh, Lord, yeah. know. from knowing the, the Lord, Lord Spirit. from, from yeah. experiencing yeah. the Lord. Yeah. So maybe it's something that we should uh, think about. Are we probably getting too technical? Are we getting too comfortable with the modern world? We need to go back, like Father Bill was saying, you know, sit in front of the log. Sit in, sit in front of the fire mm -hmm. and, and become that log, but ignite it with the Holy Spirit. It's, what do you think? It's brother? all personal yeah. here. Yeah, the gifts, the gifts of the Spirit are given to all of us. Yes. All of us. And uh, we, the more mature people, should somehow find a way of how it can be passed on to the younger people. How they can, instead of quenching the Holy Spirit, how they can let it out and let everyone enjoy the gifts and the fruits of the Holy Spirit, that's right. which, which we all need. And I think that's one of the reasons why I am here today, because I wanted to hear what Brother John has to say, how he was able to stay in the renewal for so long if it's not for the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. it's By the, the way, Holy. the, the, uh, the Catherine of Siena Institute, yes. In Colorado, uh, and what's her name? Uh, oh, that, uh, anyway, I know uh, I know the lady, and the, I don't know the pastor. She began this with a priest, and uh, and 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 they were teaching the teaching the kids directly to the parish. They had a team who would go to parishes, and. And by the way, I didn't know that, that, that this particular person, until just a few days ago, had become a Catholic in the course of her life. But, she, but they have the best teaching, or best uh, uh, teachable equipment for all of the charismatic gifts that, mm. on the planet. Mm -hmm. that they're the experts. St. Catherine Sien Institute. In the St. Catherine. St. Yeah. Catherine Institute, yeah. Yeah. Institute. Yeah. 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 And so, uh, but, uh, but, but apart from that, a prayer group is a precious, precious place to spend time. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, you know, and, and there's, So if, if I may add, um, 
my answer actually and be so bold to consider myself in the youth here because there's so much wisdom as uh, I would would want to say that um, what myself as a, a youth seeing such wonderful uh, leadership is the faithfulness that uh, you all have provided for the you know, charismatic movement and for God really and it's that strength that perseverance and and wanting to reach people for the Lord you know uh, sets a fire in our hearts to see even with you know we're younger and we don't have as much as many ailments and we find it difficult sometimes to make but to see that knowing that with age having family members who aren't so well maybe getting up in the morning actually hurts but yet you you still make it and you put forward effort to bring you know the joy of God to to other people is such a this fills us with so much and so I would say I'm so grateful to all of you for doing that and persevering thank you so much John for that and Hilda and and Al, and you're still too young to see. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost there. Thank you, thank you for all your hard work, it too. Is, it is, it is an honor. You're, you are a light, uh, you're a light in the charismatic movement. Uh, yeah. We theory. all are. And I just want but, to, before you continue, brother, um, yeah. I just want to say something to um, John and Sister Hilda, and Brother Al as well. Um, brother Lino has said it very well. But um, listening to you, I really feel that we need to honor your legacy. And I mean, like, your efforts, like he's saying, your sacrifices. Um, you're a, an inspiration, all of you. You, are, you, yes. you. you all are an inspiration, but John, seriously, right. when I heard that you came to your prayer meeting and you took the streetcar, there was no restrictions for you to get on and get there. I went home and I talked to my husband and I said, if the Lord gives me the grace to be a hundred, I want to be like that. Because what you said is very true. We enter into an age or maybe a certain time of our life that we start putting forward excuses for the Lord. Mm -hmm. But you have given us a great example that there is no excuses when you want to be a saint. So you have started that legacy. We honor you, we thank you, and we want to follow your footsteps. And in the name of the renewal, in the name of laity, in the name of all the priests, we want to say thank you for just showing us that God is real.